Uh, hello there. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, something that can be a problem, especially for people new to uh, astronomy using telescopes, um, and that is uh, finding objects. Usually when you get a telescope, first thing you do is you, you know, you look for the easiest to find objects in the sky, you know, the planets, moon, Orion Nebula, Andromeda, other uh, things that are close to bright objects, and those are usually easier to f easy to find and uh, it's not really a problem. Now what happens as you stay in the hobby longer you want to start trying to find other things that are harder to find. They're either not close to bright stars or maybe they're fainter objects like galaxies or some nebulas and then you find it's a real struggle. It takes you a lot of time to find things and you know if you're really patient and you just enjoy the process that may not be a problem. If you're not as patient and you really want to see objects and you know, you don't have a lot of time, maybe, uh, you want to be able to find things more efficiently. And that's I'm talking, you know, people who don't have a computerized telescope in general, although I'm going to talk about that, how you can use a small computerized telescope to help you with big ones that are not computerized here in a moment. Probably the most important and simplest thing to do, I think, to assist you is the finder scope. It's not the finder scope per se, it's having only one finder scope and that's usually the problem. So having two finder scopes on your telescope, a manual telescope, I think is the best uh, solution to that problem where it's going to speed it up. So what I've done, there's really two ways to get two finder scopes. You can either, so let's take a look up close here. You can either, uh, like on this telescope, drill holes and add another finder scope outlet which is what was done on this scope. So what this does it allows you to have uh, so the red dot finder or you could have a straight through like a 6x30 to find the object or find the part in the sky you're trying to get to. Get to the approximate position in the sky you're trying to get to. And then using a right angle finder all right, like this one is much easier and more comfortable to actually scan the sky and look for more specific hints, either the object itself or uh, perhaps things that you're looking for from looking in a book of what other objects to look for to get you close. Because if you don't have both of them, you know, this type of finder scope is very hard to use just starting out and finding your initial uh, point of light you're looking for, the initial bright object or whatever. Uh, it's very difficult to do. So that takes time and it's frustrating. Once you get on the object, you know, it works good, but it, it takes a lot more time because it's, you're not looking straight through it and there's guesswork involved in getting it lined up. But if you only use like a red dot finder or a straight through finder scope, finding the initial bright object you're looking for to get you close to where you're going is easy, but then a red dot finder is not going to help you actually find the object or get that close to the object and a see-through 6x30 or whatever is going to be upside down and it's going to be uh, you know uh, it's not going to be a right angle it's not, it's not going to be comfortable to use even a see-through like a 6x30 and that's going to make it difficult also for you and uncomfortable and you now that's what I think the frustration comes in you know, especially, you know, if you're older or whatever and having to maneuver your body around, that, that's really a problem. So having both of these is the best of both worlds. They make up for what they're not good at by having the partner finder scope um, fill in the gap of what you're not good at. So that's one way to do it, is to drill holes. Another way is to buy a dual uh, finder scope bracket. Okay, so this is something that I purchased uh, from Orion, this is uh, this dual bracket. So it slides in to your like your dovetail bracket, like any finder, but it gives you two finder scopes. So again, you have the best of both worlds. You can have a a see-through straight finder, like a red dot, or a six by thirty or eight by forty a straight through finder to find the initial place in the sky, and you can do it easily by lining up. And then you get to use your six your uh, uh, right angle finder which is much more comfortable and you know larger the better like this is a 9 by 50 to actually scan the area of the sky you're looking for to either look for the object itself 
or the hints of where the object is, you know, by looking at your astronomy book or whatever that helps describe you get to that point. So this, so we'll take a look at what the current price is uh, right now for this. Okay, so here it is online. This is what it looks like. It's actually, yeah, I, much cheaper than when I bought it, $43. That's actually a much better deal. Of course, the price is going to fluctuate. So again, check the uh, link in the description box, Amazon link, and you can check the price whenever you're watching this. But that's a pretty good deal, and there really isn't much like this that I've seen. I haven't seen anybody else with a dual finder uh, mounting bracket out there. I doesn't mean there won't be some out at some point or some I'm not aware of, but this is the only one that I've ever seen. But that's actually a fairly good price considering what it does for you. So anyway, there, that's what it would look like. Now let's talk about something else. This is a big 10-inch uh, reflector. It's manual. And sometimes, you know, when you get something like this, you know, the seeing is much better, but still finding things, again, is a problem. Even with having two finder scopes, some of your fainter objects, some of the galaxies or fainter nebula, are still a real challenge to find, even with two finder scopes. So, again, another solution to that is actually having a smaller computerized scope. Buying a computerized scope on a, a telescope this big, you know, it's going to be very, very expensive. And so you can get a much less expensive, uh, smaller computerized scope. And what you would do, just like this one, I've actually done this, and it's been very helpful, is I will uh, program in the computerized scope, the object I'm looking for. Then I will look through the uh, finder. I'll get you know on it, and I'll look through the finder here. And I may not even be able to see the galaxy through this smaller scope. But if I know that my computerized uh, equipment is working properly, I know that I'm on the right part of the sky. So I can look through this finder scope and say, okay, here's the part of the sky I'm looking at. I can see the pattern of the stars. And then I can go to the larger telescope and get that finder scope, which it's better to have, you know, the exact same kind of finder, like right angle finder uh, or whatever you're using. That way you can get the exact same look. So you maneuver it around until you see the exact same stars, exact same patterns that you see over here. And then that will put you on the object, and now of course as you're looking through your large 10-inch telescope, you're probably going to find the object is probably going to be right there, or, or if not, really, really close. And you should be able to find it uh, with a good eyepiece. So I've done that, and that's allowed me to find some galaxies and nebula that I simply could not find uh, by just manually trying to uh, use the techniques of manually finding. So I just, you know, for whatever reason I couldn't do it, you know, I'm sure uh, some people are really good at that, really patient. Some of us aren't, and I'm not really patient. So that's something that can work. And you don't even need a telescope this big. What matters is the finder. That's what matters. So you could have a small, you know, 70, 80 uh, millimeter uh, scope to use on your uh, computerized uh, mount and it's about getting the finder scope on the target and making sure you have the same kind of finder scope on your main scope. So that could save you a lot of money. Um, maybe you already have a small a small uh, computerized telescope already but if not you know they're reasonably priced to get something like this with a small uh, telescope. So that's just a way to save money and you know, it's workable. Obviously, it's easier to have a fully computerized uh, large scope, but, you know, very expensive. So I just thought these uh, might help you if you're having trouble. If you have any other questions or comments, feel free uh, to leave a comment, and I'll get back to you and see if I can uh, give you any insight to what I've learned from being in this hobby. All right, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching.